I was about to check if it's a good morning or good afternoon, and uh, as fortune would have it, it's exactly 12 p.m., uh, so I'll start with a good afternoon. Uh, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Bhaskar, uh, and I have the privilege of leading what we refer to as the modern work um, environment uh, at Microsoft India, <coughs> which is all about uh, how we are using the latest tools and capabilities to unlock human potential. And I'll keep talking about human potential over the course of the next 25 to 30 minutes. Um, I hope to land my discussion today in two parts. We clearly have a perspective on how to support the government of India and all you eminent dignitaries on how we can unlock the value of human potential in today's workplace. And I think uh, more interestingly, I'll build on the conversation that Himani already started upon, uh, which is how we are leveraging the power of generative AI to do just that. Uh, there's a there's a lot of lot of interest, lot of curiosity about generative AI uh, and how does this really come alive and how do people like you and I benefit from this en enormous power of, of, I would say, artificial intellect uh, more than intelligence uh, and I'm going to try and show you some of that today. Uh, before that, <coughs> let me just give you a, a small perspective to start with. Now, <coughs> we've spoken a lot about digital governance today and <coughs> at the heart of uh, digital governance, I believe that the Uber agenda is how can we fundamentally unlock a really compelling citizen experience. And I'll use this word experience a lot today. Citizen experience, employee experience, human experience, all of these things have become more and more important ever since all of us have been part of this entire COVID era. Now, in order to drive very compelling citizen experiences, we believe at the heart of it, any large government entity, any government organization pretty much needs to focus on four key pillars. And these are the pillars that you can see on the slide ahead of you. The first is that we believe that in order to drive operational excellence, the heart of it is really productivity. What is productivity? Productivity means a whole lot of different things to different uh, people. But we believe at the heart of it, productivity really is unlocked through adequate communication and collaboration. Right? So if as, as employees, as leaders, if you're not connected, if you're not collaborating, we cannot really provide a whole lot of experience for our colleagues and for the citizens whom, whom, whom we serve. The second we believe is that it's very important to transform the experience of every employee in the workplace. Every employee. Now, when you think about it, think about a large enterprise organization, think about a government setup. We realize that there are three kinds of employees in any kind of organization. They're the power users. Think about the leaders. Think about the, the, the members of the board. Think about people who are taking decisions all the time. We refer to them as executives. We have employees who are working you know, every day in order to drive outcomes. And this is frontline workforce. Now think about the people on the ground who are largely using mobile phones for their everyday work, right? consuming information, delivering information, getting action done. And we believe the experience of all these different kinds of, of employees in a workplace is tremendously important in order to drive citizen delivery. The third is we believe over time, we need to be able to enable operational efficiency. What does that mean? Fancy word, operational efficiency. Heart of it is the word efficiency. What is efficiency? It's basically the ability for us to drive higher outcome with lesser input. And what is this input? I think the most important commodity that all of us are really starved for is a very important four letter word. And what is that? It's time, right? Time, I think, is, is one of those resources that we just don't have enough of. What if we had the ability to, to use the same time, perhaps reduce the amount of time as input, but generate higher outcomes? That's when we start becoming truly efficient. And lastly, it's about really creating solutions which unlocks all of this. There's a lot of technology available today. Uh, Himani has referred to that in a bit. But how do we really leverage technology to enhance collaboration, to transform experiences, and to drive efficiency? I think this is fundamentally what we believe is at the heart of a really high performance citizen delivery organization. Now, we use these two words a lot, performance and growth. Performance and growth, right? Performance, what is performance to us? Performance is, we've already spoken about productivity and efficiency, but when you're able to drive higher outcomes in a small amount of time, we become efficient. When we repeatedly do that, we believe that we are becoming a high performance organization, which is regularly demonstrating a high level of efficiency. Now, when we kind of broke down this word performance, we said, look, for everybody in the workforce, in order for, for us to deliver performance, there are two very critical imperatives. 
What are these? So of course, it's productivity. Each of us spend insane amounts of time every day in writing emails and updating Word documents and writing presentations and in, in, in doing so much of what we refer to as, you know, task-based work. I had to demonstrate the fact that there is a Word document to be written, an update to be given. And what if we can get work done with a reduced amount of time? That's where productivity basically gets unlocked. But the second thing about it, when all of us came back from COVID or when you were working during the COVID time frame, for the first time, we started hearing of these words called well-being. You remember for the first time we said employee well-being is very important. Can, can I check in and find out if you're doing all right? And what was that? It was basically to figure out if the experience of that individual was optimal. And therefore, we've realized that over time, it's not just about productivity, it's also about human experience. Human experience goes up when we engage better. When as an organization, you're engaging with your executives, with your employees, with your frontline workers. If that engagement goes up, we believe we can drive more energy, more empowerment, and definitely more output. So to us, the heart of it, performance is a function of both human engagement and human productivity. Now, let's kind of go a little bit deeper on this word engagement, right? And, and, uh, and I have the privilege of working with a whole lot of customers, the whole lot of people every single day. And when I ask them, you know, what, what does human engagement mean to you? What does employee experience mean to you? It basically, you know, it's interesting. They say, you know, when I, when I drive a better sense of engagement, I get larger amount of productivity. So that's a, that's a cause and an effect uh, relationship. Now think about it when we go to our uh, organizations and if somebody pats us on the back or appreciates us, our experience kind of enhances, right? If I feel more energized at work, then of course I'm able to drive a higher set of outcomes and therefore, you know, there's, there's a greater amount of productivity. But what we've learned is that human engagement or employee engagement is more than just productivity. Human engagement is about the ability for me to get an insight on the kind of work that you're doing. The human engagement is about providing you with learning paths to grow and develop in the work that you do. Human engagement is about driving clarity of purpose that you do. Remember the first time we join a company and we feel, you know, so excited, so energized. We've got those, you know, fancy new devices and a new email address. We call that the day zero experience because the engagement of the organization to a new employee is pretty much at the peak at that time. We've, what we've understood is if you're able to create a fabric of experiences which drives human engagement consistently, then the outcomes and therefore the performance and therefore the productivity of the individual clearly goes up. That's, that's been a first learning. The second learning when we have kind of gone back and said, look, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about your frontline workers. Now, what, what is a frontline worker? The frontline worker is basically an employee who's representing your brand and talking to, to, to your customers, right? If you're, a, if you're an oil and gas major, it, it could be very well, uh, you know, the person who's handling uh, the petrol bunk. For a healthcare organization, it could be very well the nursing staff. There are so many frontline workers who are basically part of any organization. And it's very important for us to be able to drive a, a very compelling experience for our frontline workers because that in turn drives a greater engagement and drives a greater amount of outcome across the organization. Now, customers are telling us that if we do not focus on our frontline workers, productivity suffers, attrition goes up, Customer data is possibly leaked if they're not engaged. And basically, the overall engagement of the individual goes down. So over time, we've learned that the employee experience needs to be just as important for our frontline workers as opposed to just the organization employees and its leaders. And that's a very important thematic we have learned as we kind of engage with more and more customers. Now, all of this is great learning. And this is basically as a result of, I'm still not talk products or AI or the fancy tools that we have. But I really want to take a second to, to build on Himani's conversation on AI. There's a tremendous amount of, I would say, curiosity and excitement around AI. Everybody's talking about AI. If you see LinkedIn, every second post is about AI. Now, what we did was, <coughs> from a Microsoft perspective, we said, let's spend some time to understand a little bit more about this whole AI phenomenon. So we, we ran a survey uh, across 30 countries, 30,000 people, and we came up with a fairly interesting set of learnings. Uh, the learnings were basically threefold. Remember, I just spoke about the fact that we are spending inordinate amounts of time in writing emails, in writing Word documents, in writing presentations. Who does not agree with me that, that it takes much more time than we thought it would take to build five slides or to write 
a couple of pages on a Word document or to write an email to the chairperson and we thought it will take about 30 minutes but it ended up taking about two hours, right? Think about the amount of time it's taking for each of us to really you know, get important work done. This kind of work which kind of takes up more time than required is what we refer to as digital debt. And when there's digital debt, what it does is it basically, you know, causes a little bit of brain freeze. We were thinking a work, a job will get done in five hours. It's getting done in eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. So the mental capacity that we had to drive innovation suffers. So digital debt is clearly costing us innovation. We have learned that more and more AI is coming into the workplace. And if it's harnessed well, it could be actually a great ally for people within the organization. Right? We are all used to using mobile phones and devices and using a whole lot of technology. What if AI were, were to kind of reduce the amount of time taken to use technology? We believe there's tremendous amount of opportunity for us to ally with AI. And the third we believe is that it will not come naturally. It will take a little bit of time for us to understand, assimilate and of course apply the overall tenets of AI. And that's what we refer to as AI aptitude. Right? So these are basically findings from Microsoft's own research across 30 countries, 30,000 people, where we have learned that more and more people are understanding this high performance organization. High performance is a function of engagement and productivity and AI possibly has a great role to play in driving the workforce and the driving the, the delivery of, of, of citizen services for the future. Now, in order to enable this, we believe that an AI powered organization fundamentally has three sets of AI capabilities that can fundamentally get unlocked. What are these? It's foundational productivity. Now, what is foundational productivity? Very simply put, all of us use our laptops and devices. What is the first experience that you have on your device? It's basically your operating system, right? So that's foundation. The, the operating system is basically helping you be, become productive. You are writing stuff, you're consuming stuff, you're, you're getting on the browser, you're, you're consuming a whole lot of content. There is a, a, a very core tenet of productivity which gets unlocked the moment you boot your device up. And there is a great opportunity for AI to embellish that overall experience on the foundational productivity element. The second part of it is automation. Now think about the time that we're spending to write emails, to write Word documents, to write PowerPoints and so on and so forth. We believe AI can have a very disruptive role to play in the productivity that you're generating from basic automo automotive uh, chores, uh, uh, you know, as a result of basically creating content. There's a tremendous amount of content we're generating every day. And we believe AI has a role to kind of simplify all of that. And the third is we believe in order to truly unlock a high performance organization, there are capabilities that we need to kind of develop to ensure that the experience of an individual also gets completely uh, you know, enhanced. So there are three different canvases in which AI has a very, very important role to play. So with this background, now let me tell you about how Microsoft is thinking about uh, enabling the AI powered organization of today. So the first part of it, you remember I spoke about uh, foundational productivity. We've basically completely re-engineered the experience of search. Now, more often than not, when we go for a search, we talk about you know, searching on the web, you know, looking at content, looking at stuff. A lot of this content that we are, we are searching for and looking for, by the way, is used by third party providers and looking at your data. So we believe that AI, and, and Himani touched upon it, needs to be founded on, on the back of ethical principles. And we've completely re-engineered the Bing chat experience of search to make information relevant and easily accessible to you, both on the browser as well as in the operating system, which is basically Windows Copilot. The second thing that we have done is we've come up with an absolutely new and curated set of capabilities called Microsoft 365 Copilot. This works with applications that all of us are familiar with. What are these? This is email. This is Teams for collaboration. This is Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Loop whiteboard, etc. So all of these applications that all of us have been using for tens of years has now reached a completely new era of AI automation. And I'm hoping to show some experience of that today. And the third, and I'll probably not uh, uh, show this today, but I will to talk about it. We have created a completely new fabric for driving employee engagement. Remember, I spoke about employee insight, employee learning, employee goaling, um, all of that capability or requirement to drive employee experiences gets addressed by a new fabric that we refer to as Microsoft Viva. Again, we have taken AI capabilities and pretty much embedded all of this AI capability into the heart of this entire experience. Now, before I get on, uh, I'm, I'm looking at giving you a little bit of a demonstration of how this experience will look like. But before I start, 
and Himani touched upon it. How many of you have heard of this term called prompt engineering or talking to the AIs? Okay, so I, I'll go as far as to say we were very, very familiar with electrical engineering and electronics engineering and mechanical engineering. I think the future is about how we can converse better, right? It's not those, uh, those fancy language courses that we take, but we need an ability to talk and engage with an artificial intelligence entity who will help you become more and more productive. And that's what we refer to as prompts. There's a completely new science, and I would say guidance and coaching and direction available to us in order to get the most of our productivity canvases. And, and Microsoft is actually creating prompt libraries and science behind that on how to engage with our AI partners. We call them partners or digital allies. The word co-pilot basically comes from the fact that we're looking at these AI companions, not just as an assistant, but also as your companion to kind of unlock uh, capability from the canvases that we have. So prompt engineering, very, very important. Remember, I'd spoken about the browser, I'd spoken about the operating system, and I'd spoken about applications. So over the next 10 minutes, let's kind of look at, you know, how these experiences are getting uh, completely fired up uh, using AI capabilities of today. <clears throat> uh, a small disclaimer, uh, the AI experiences I'm going to showcase right now is obviously dependent on a good broadband connection. I'm connected to the hotel uh, broadband right now, so there might be a little bit of latency as, as the content kind of comes up, but let me, let me start with that. What is the first canvas I'd spoken of? I'd spoken about our search experience. Now, the amount of time that we spend in searching for, for, for content, both on the internet and the intranet, is actually humongous. Now, all of us go to our browsers every day, and, and of course, I cannot mention, but there are very prominent and popular search engines that we go to, and all of us love searching, and I think all of us consider ourselves to be fairly good at searching content on the internet. What we have done is we've, we've kind of put this overall concept of chat-based search and also providing the capability for us to talk to that search experience. So now how many of you are following the Cricket World Cup right now, which India is about to kind of participate, right? There's so much of information, right? We love trivia. We go to this website and we say, you know, who has won? So what if I would, were to say, give me information, but you know what? I want the information in a particular format. All of us love tables. So I'll say, you know what? Create a table of uh, all cricket one day international world cup winners since 1975 and show me and share insights on India's performance. So I've done a couple of different things, right? I've not gone and said, you know, World Cup winners. I've gone and said, you know, please render the information in a particular format. I love a table. I've talked about, you know, uh, the ability for me to provide a little bit of insight on the content that I'm looking at. Now think about it. If we were to kind of build a little bit of content of this nature, I want a tabular format. I want the ability to export it to an Excel and send it to somebody that I want. All of this information is, by the way, in the internet. But the AI engine is basically taking content from the internet and telling me how uh, the overall experience can be rendered in a format that I can basically, uh, you know, uh, talk about, right? And what was the second part of the question that I had asked? I had said, tell me a little bit more about how India has also basically performing. There's a little bit of a latency, but, but the overall experience embellishment that we're getting from something that, uh, 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 I'm sorry, there's a little bit of an internet issue and that's why it happens. Right? But you get the idea. I'm, I'm basically looking for content from the internet and I'm basically parsing and providing information on the way that I want it to be consumed. Now, what's the second source of information that all of us look at on a daily basis apart from the internet? That's also the internet. Yeah, it's us. It's the intranet. Right? All of us work in organizations and how many times have you said, you know what, go to that SharePoint library or go to this folder and find out those, those documents and get content which is relevant for you. So there's tons and tons of content which is getting digitally generated as each of us is working on our stuff every day. We go on a, we go on a Teams call, we write a document, we write a PowerPoint, we write a Word document. Right? There's tons and tons of information available in the intranet. Now what Microsoft is doing is to basically taking that entire search indexing capability, instead of pointing to external sources, we said, you know what, let me actually look at content which is available internally. And, and these are all the documents that I've worked on 
in the recent past. These are Word documents, PowerPoint documents, Excel documents. One of the documents that I've basically just, just basically worked on is which one? It's the PowerPoint slides, which I've basically used to kind of talk to you just a few minutes from now. So what I'm basically asking the search engine to do is, please look at my document and give me an FAQ basis the PowerPoint document that I just kind of delivered. Now imagine if I'm talking to some of you and if I have a cheat sheet of, you know, there were, there were 35, 40, 50 slides, but I'm asking the AI to extract the most important parts of that content and provide to me on the browser. So you understand how AI is basically becoming a much smarter companion of not just looking at the internet, but also the intranet in terms of every possible signal that you're generating. And this could be recent emails, this could be a, a you know, a file, this could be a Teams call, this could be anything, uh, a meeting with my person, with my boss, it's able to generate content, pass that content and give it to me. Fair? So that was the browser experience. This is also called Bing Chart Enterprise, available on the consumer and the professional variants. Now, the second experience that we've got over here is what we refer to as the Windows Copilot, right? This is your operating system. Now, the operating system is very important, but remember the last time we all of us got quite confused when we had to go to settings. There's so many different things in settings, turning something dark, something light, putting a display resolution, extending to a screen and so on and so forth. What if AI had the ability of making that overall experience so much better? So for example, what if I say, you know what, uh, uh, turn on the dark theme of Windows, all right? Simple stuff, I like stuff, I'm working in an environment where I like something to be, to be presented in a slightly darker format. And it says, do you want to turn this on? I just say yes. And it's basically invoking, you just saw it became dark at the bottom. My entire experience has become dark. So I can invoke different commands from the Windows experience and make this come live. But what if I ask saying, you know what, make me more productive. I'm asking a fairly open-ended question to the AI. This is the operating system. I don't know what all it can do. But basically I'm asking the AI to help me become more productive in my daily, daily chores. And what it says is, should I set on a focus session? Should I set up a do not disturb mode and so on and so forth. Can you imagine the, the operating system is providing you with the ability of basically conversing with it to make your overall experience that much easier and smarter and, and sharper. So that was the Windows experience. We, we spoke about the browser experience, the Windows experience. The third very compelling experience that we're kind of driving in the entire AI experience is basically Teams. Uh, any of you have used uh, Teams over here? Fantastic. Now, think about the time that um, a call was set up at uh, 10 p.m. at night and you were invited to join a call. And of course, you couldn't because you had a dinner or you just had to take rest. Uh, we call that the FOMO moment, right? The fearing of miss fear of missing out. And uh, what you normally do is, you know what, please record the call. Please record the call so that I can go through two to three hours of the call and I'll be prepared for having a good conversation tomorrow. Now, what if I had the ability of actually talking to a transcript or talking to a call after the call has ended and giving me the most important parts of it. So uh, this call was recorded and all I'm asking the AI to do is, you know what, just recap the entire meeting. I do not want to go through two to three hours of recordings. I just want to understand what was the most important stuff that was basically spoken about in the call. Tell me the, the important themes. Tell me, tell me what exactly I should remember uh, as the call kind of happened and I want to recap and kind of get on to the next experience that, that I want. So I'm actually asking the co-pilot engine or the AI engine to read through the, the long transcript of the call to understand who said what, what key actions were taken. And just look at this. It's actually telling me, you know what, these were the key topics, who spoke, these were the topics, this was inside, this was, this was what Bhaskar said, use cases, next steps and so on and so forth. I, I can actually say, create a table of the next steps and give me a due date, the AI will do that for you. But what is an experience that we missed if we were not in the call? An experience that we miss when we're not in the call is the human sentiment. Was it agitated? Was it an agitated call? Were people shouting? Was it good? Was it nice? What did I miss? So what if I ask the AI engine saying, you know what, tell me about, just tell me about how people were feeling. All right, there were seven of us in the call. There's always somebody who is a little bit more passionate than the others. So I just want to kind of, before I talk to my boss, I just want to understand, hopefully the, 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 the meeting kind of was okay because a few of my team members were participating. And I just want to understand if the, the larger conversation was kind of palatable and it kind of went all right. So I'm, I'm asking the AI engine to assess based on how people spoke, what was the sentiment basically which happened. And look at this, it's saying the mood was positive, curious, 
They asked questions, gave feedback, expressed announcements, excitements, and so on and so forth. Right? So the team's experience is allowing me to talk to a call which has already happened and generate all kinds of assistance. Now, what is this basically doing? Remember the most precious commodity that I've spoken about? It was time. The amount of time you had to spend to join the call, to revisit the call's recording, to make your own notes, to summarize the call, possibly publish it, all of that drudgery is being taken away by the AI engine. I can tell you, for a one-hour call, we typically spend another 40, you know, four to five hours in preparing, delivering, and assimilating stuff from the call. All that 70% of productivity is back to you. That's what is happening on the on the call experience. Now, I can actually go ahead and and you know, there's as I said, there's all kinds of content which is already there in my in my SharePoints and all my different documents. I can actually ask it, you know, tell me about the latest in Copilot announcements. Read through my mails. Uh, help me prepare for my next conversation with my manager. And the AI engine and teams is looking through all of that content and providing information which is relevant for me. So I'll just show you uh, one of the typical things that we do is, you know, talk about policies. Remember, we have to go to a URL, figure out the right policy, download it, make a summary of it. I just went and asked the AI, what is sabbatical policy? And you know what, it gave me the policy and it gave me references saying, you know what, there is a SharePoint website, we can go and find more details and so on and so forth. Right, I've asked stuff saying, you know what, help me prepare for my next one-on-one -on -one meeting with my manager. Now, it understands that your manager's name is going to be Dhania. You know, there are email exchanges, there are uh, there are forwards that she has made. You, want to, you may want to look at all that content and therefore you want to you want to basically prepare your conversation better. And it gives me connections to all the emails that she has sent to me before I can go ahead and have that conversation with her. Just look at the AI capability of not just looking through the content, it's simple English. The prompts is nothing but simple English, but the AI is able to understand that English and have that intelligence to parse content and render it in a way that I can consume it. Just imagine the amount of time saved in the AI engine. What is the single most important tool that all of us use every day? Probably for several hours in a day. Digital tool. I'll ask again. What is the single most important electronic application that all of us use every day? You're probably looking at it right now. It's email, right? Now, what's the problem with email is a fantastic tech. What, when was it inve invented? Decades back. We still latched on to it. When you think about email, what are the two problems you'll say, I wish I could do away, away with? I'll tell you. The first problem is my boss sends an email. Somebody chooses to reply on that. And that opens a can of worms because everybody wants to sound important and reply on top of that. So soon an email comes up and 17 people are replying. You know, everybody is sounding more important than the, 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 than the one previous. And suddenly there's a huge chain of emails and I have to spend about an hour to figure out what I should read from this entire chain. Has this happened to you? Right? Now what we have done is we have asked the AI, now this is my email experience, right? I've asked the AI to say, you know what, these are, these are basically nothing but email threads where there's tons and tons of content. So somebody started, somebody started replying, 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 replying. And you know what, I just asked Copilot saying, please look through those 17 different chains of the emails that happened and help me with two or three simple points. And there it goes, it gives me three points which are the most relevant for this entire chain of 17 mails which happened and gives me references for me to kind of click and go to that particular email thread as well. So this is email summarization. How much time has it saved? Possibly 20 to 30% of my time. Now this is, not, this is not enough. I can actually say, you know what, let me, I, I can possibly write a new mail. Now all of us write mails of course. Now one of the things that we kind of, uh, sorry. One of the things that we spend time on while writing an email is hunting for content. Would you agree? You want to write an email to energize your team on a Monday morning or to invite them for a, for a movie, maybe, all right? Or uh, tell them about the latest uh, Asian games which is happening. There's so much of content that we kind of, uh, one of the important topics that my manager likes to talk about is work-life balance. So for example, I'll say, you know what, help me write an email on the importance of work-life balance. Right, so I'm asking Copilot to help me become a smarter author. Of course, all of us are authors. We have our own ways of writing stuff. But what if AI had the ability of, of giving me a suggestion? Now, here it's actually come up in the form of a poem because I can actually make it into a poem, but I can make it formal as well and regenerate it. Right, I can make it casual, I can make it concise, I can make it long, I can make it poetic and so on and so forth. So just imagine the ability of the AI 
to be an assistant to you in terms of generating content in the form of an email that you want to send out to your entire set of colleagues and so on and so forth. You can actually write content. You can ask the AI, you know, make this sound smarter or, or make it hyper personalized. I normally sign off my mail saying best regards Bhaskar. Right, I can ask the AI to say, you know what, make it sound like me. That's the latest embellishment that we've got to the AI capability saying, make it sound like. So hyper-personalization in terms of how the content can be, can be made to look and sound like the way that I normally write stuff. So it doesn't look like it's plagiarized content. It's not plagiarized content, it's basically content which is getting rendered in the, in the form and format that you like it to be. Um, it's taking a few seconds and in the interest of time, but just look at this. It's given me a complete draft of how to write stuff. Okay. So outside, now we've, we've, we have looked at browser, we've looked at windows, we've looked at teams, we've looked at outlook. Let's take a look at one of the most other important applications all of us use, which is Microsoft Word. Now the AI capability allows you to do so much on Microsoft Word. One of the things, for example, I just showed you a, a Word document, uh, a PowerPoint presentation that I was just demonstrating. So what if I say, you know what, summarize some uh, create a daft or create a document from and I want to reference a file and I'll say, you know what, use exactly the same presentation that I was, I was referring to. I can do so much more. I mean, I'm just doing this very simply because there's a presentation all of us are familiar with. But if, example, there is, there's work life, uh, there is Asian games, there is content within the internet or the internet. And we spend so much of time in going to websites and trying to figure out information, copying, pasting, putting it over here. What happens when we put it over here? The, the formatting goes all over the place. But Word has the ability of reading content from every possible source and look at it, it's writing the document as I am speaking. Using the slides that I probably uh, prepared just about an hour back. So I can actually finish this and say, create an email for this entire August audience and attach a Word document which is a summary of, of the PowerPoint because of course nobody wants to read 25 to 30 different PowerPoint slides. Cool, right? So just look at how AI is basically making a completely new experience from our everyday tools. Now. We are almost on time, so I just want to show one last experience and then I'm going to wrap and take it up for questions. One of the most important parts of collaboration, we spoke about productivity, we spoke about collaboration is the ability for us to write stuff together. Now, so many of us go to a whiteboard, right? And, and we write, we, we start writing stuff, somebody else writes stuff, we provide a visual, somebody says, you know what, uh, I would like to do an event outside Lalit. What if I were to make an event in which Delhi was showing up in 1920s? Great, right? If, if What if I have, have a couple of posters in which Taj Mahal or Qutub Minar or Delhi in certain parts, can, can I visualize that? And people are struggling to figure out what you're visualizing. Now what AI is doing, it's allowing me the ability to actually visualize content, not search for content, but visualize content. So what if I say Delhi in the 1920s and then it starts giving you prompts saying, okay, let's make it into an overhead view with studio lighting, right? Please mind my words, I'm not looking or searching for content, I'm generating content. I could have said, you know what, create a Taj Mahal with five, five motorcyclists running on top of it. Right, so this is content which I'm requesting the AI to help me drive a better level of collaboration. Look at this, it's actually generated a vision of how AI is looking at Delhi in the 1920s with the sum of the attributes and so on and so forth. So I'll pause here in the interest of time, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the age of AI. Welcome to the age of how AI is enabling much greater human potential, greater productivity, greater efficiency, and basically improving human experience, freeing up time, and ensuring that we are productive at our productive best. It was a pleasure talking to all of you. Thank you very much.